The genetics department here at Stanford has a collaboration with the Tech Museum in San Jose, where graduate students and postdocs from here go there to teach interactive genetics workshops. It's great because it means that visitors to the museum get to learn about genetics and geneticists get to learn a lot about communication. Both of these are very important. It makes me happy to be part of a department that cares about outreach and communication. Anywho, the waitlist is about two years long, and finally, it's my turn. And I've been working with the museum on creating a new interactive exhibit, Bacterial Painting. So this is a tube of E. coli. Bah! No, it's, it's actually not scary. E. coli is actually a very common and useful tool in biology, and the strains that we use in lab are pretty much harmless. E. coli is great because it takes up DNA really easily, so we can put new genes that we want into E. coli. And then the E. coli will express many, many copies of those genes and often express a lot of the protein that's the product of those genes. As an example, here is normal E. coli. It's tan-ish. But in this E. coli, we've introduced a gene from a jellyfish that creates a green fluorescent protein. And as you can see, the E. coli has made lots and lots of copies of that gene and lots and lots of the green fluorescent protein from that gene. GFP plays an important role as a marker and reporter gene in biology, but today we're using it to make our bacterial paint just a little bit cooler. Our painting supplies include plates, spreaders, stencils, a pipette, and our E. coli. First, you need to add E. coli to the agar plate, which is essentially food for the bacteria. Then we take a spreader and gently spread the bacteria around. After they dry a little bit, I'll place my stencils on the UV box place my E. coli plates on top of them, and then turn the UV on. After a couple minutes, I'll take them off and pop them into the incubator overnight. The idea here is that the UV light is going to hit all of that bacteria not covered by the stencil, and it's actually going to kill that bacteria. The UV light causes mutations in the bacteria's DNA, and while the bacteria will try and repair these mutations, if we hit it with enough UV light, the bacteria won't be able to keep up, and it's going to die. This is not so dissimilar from how UV light from the sun can cause damaging mutations in our own cells if we go outside without sunscreen or proper sun protection. So remember to wear your sunscreen. There are some plates where I just wanted to paint the E. coli on in different shapes. Those guys didn't get any UV. If I'm gonna be honest with you, this took a couple weeks to get right. Some of my first batches of E. coli weren't concentrated enough, others were too concentrated, some of them seemed to have lost the GFP gene, so it took a lot of tries and iterations to get it right. That's science. And now that I have something sort of working, it's time to take it to the museum and try it out with more people. I'm super happy with how these turned out and also very happy that I got the chance to work with the Tech Museum on making this work. There were a few other things I wanted to talk about that didn't quite fit into this video. So if you're one of those people who was like, wait, green fluorescent protein from jellyfish, tell me more about that, then you can click on this video over here, right here, click, click. Or if you're one of those people who is screaming at your screen, oh my god, that's the worst sterile technique ever, where is your flame, what are you doing, this video, this, I, I know. I know, but this video, this video is for you. Go forth and do science.